It was 1916. A few years into the war, I was in the army. Infantry unit. All Welsh division over in France. Gwyn's Shorts, the audio adventures of the Legends of Tomorrow. Hope. Once upon a time, there was a group of time travellers. Or should I say a group of renegade time travellers? Who cares? Keep going. After many adventures resulting in them being jailed by the time police, came the realisation that they needed to start a new chapter of their lives. After escaping the time prison, some of them chose to raise a daughter together. While the others decided to return to the life they had been destined to, a small group, however, chose to settle in a fun fair in 1925. What do you mean, settle in? I thought this was only temporary. Shh, don't interrupt him. It was Christmas Day. It started snowing heavily around four in the afternoon, and Pearl had predicted a snowstorm. As if one psychic wasn't enough, now we got two of them. Are you jealous, Mr. Rory? Stop interrupting Gwyn! Indeed, the cards were right. A snowstorm hit the funfair just as we finished closing for the day, and we all gathered in my caravan. And by all, he means Allie, Gideon, Pell, Flora, Flabella, and also he and I. Flora had baked cookies and Fiona had prepared hot chocolate. We were looking forward to a quiet evening. You're kidding, right? It's kind of the end of the world out there, and you talk about a quiet evening. I do believe that Dr. Davies was speaking metaphorically. You have to admit that it's quite cozy in here, with all of us gathered around Quinn to hear her story. Indeed, it could be far worse. We could be lost outside in the storm, trying to find shelter and fearing for the lives of our loved ones. This sounds so dramatic. But it's such a great introduction to the events of that evening. As I was trying to tell a story without being interrupted, little did we know that a family had been caught in the storm and was desperately seeking shelter. And protection. While Gwyn was telling his story. Or trying to. I was just doing a reading and what I saw in the cards puzzled me. As I grabbed Ali's arm to get her attention. I got a vision. I saw a man and a woman trapped in the snowstorm, desperately looking for shelter. The woman was carrying a baby, trying her best to keep the baby warm. <sighs> and of course, we had to get involved. Well, of course we had to. We couldn't abandon them to their fate. But we needed to get organized. We couldn't simply run into a snowstorm and randomly search for them, hoping for the best. The risk of getting lost ourselves was too great. While the rest of the group made sure we would have all the necessary tools for a rescue mission, Dr. Davies and I built a scanner able to detect movement and heat signatures. Since time was of the essence, we figured that this was the most efficient way to ensure the success of our mission. Once we were ready, we launched the search party. I remained at the fanfare with Florvella and Fiona, in case the lost couple and their baby would reach it. We even put the funfair's lights back on, hoping that they would see them from a distance. We also had to make sure that everything would be ready to welcome our guests properly. Locating the lost couple and their child proved to be more difficult than we anticipated. Huh, you bet it was. We couldn't see a thing out there. And no offense, Gwyn, but these 1925 torches you gave us, they sucked. Luckily, our scanner did eventually track those we were looking for. And we managed to find them. And instead of thanking us, you know what they did? They fired their blasters at us. I bet you didn't see that in your cards and vision. Obviously we didn't. Or we would have said so. Luckily none of us was hit, and we took cover. It took us a little explaining, but we managed to convince them that we meant them no harm and that they would have food and shelter. I really doubt they bought the whole we saw you in a vision and my cards never lie crap. But nobody got killed and they came back with us. We all settled in Gwen's caravan. Again. This time we could enjoy the hot chocolate. And the cookies. But we were all eager to know who these people were and why they had risked their lives traveling in such a dreadful snowstorm. Huh. <laughs> Let me tell you, you're not ready for what you're about to hear. Yeah, it really came out as a shock for all of us. Once we were all settled, Maria and Jonathan told us their story. There were time travelers from the future, 
who had decided to retire once their baby would be born. They wanted to raise their child in a safe and stable environment, and they considered that time travel was none of those things. But before retiring, they wanted to time travel one last time together. Sadly, it didn't go as planned. Due to a ship's malfunction, they didn't land where they were supposed to, and as they were scouting the area, trying to determine where and when they were, Maria's water broke. There was no time to return to the ship, and Maria gave birth to her child in some stables in the middle of nowhere. Mm, this story sounds strangely familiar. This chain of events caused a disruption in the timeline, and a warrant for their arrest was issued by the time police. They didn't want their child to be raised in a time prison, therefore they tried to jump back to their own time period, hoping that if they effectively retired, the time police would drop the charges against them. Well, can you blame them? Anyone would have reacted the same way. It was an accident. It's not like they planned the whole thing. Alas, their ship crashed here, and they got caught in the snowstorm. And when we showed up, they thought that we were the time agents. We decided to help them get back home. We waited until the storm was over, and while Maria and the baby remained with Flora and Florbella, the rest of us went to the crash site. Unfortunately, the ship was beyond repair. Luckily, Gwyn came up with an idea. He would use his time machine to get the family back home. And we would salvage what we can from their ship and make sure we would erase any traces of it crashing here. Since the family would have no means of time traveling anymore, we thought that they would be off the hook. Or so we hoped. Gwen and Gideon left with the family while we took care of the ship's wreckage. We didn't waste any time. Gwyn, Mick, and I are still considered fugitives by the time police. Therefore, we wanted all traces of the crash gone. We only kept the good stuff that Gwyn and Gideon could use. When we were done, we went back to Wynn's caravan and we waited until he and Gideon returned it. It didn't take them long. For once, our calculations were correct and we didn't take any wrong turns. We did good on that day. We brought a family back home safely. Maybe we are the reason they named their baby girl Hope. We didn't judge them. We simply offered a helping hand, placing ourselves in danger to save strangers. Maybe there's still hope for a better world if we keep our hearts open. Merry Christmas. Hello, I'm Z. I'm the writer and producer of Gwyn's Shorts. Thank you everyone for your love and support. Happy holidays. Hello, my name is James Brodigam, and I'm voicing Dr. Gwyn Davies. Happy holidays, everyone. Hi, this is Allie. I play Allie. <laughs> anyway, I hope everyone has a very happy holiday season. Hi, this is Johnny Hedgepeth. I do the voice of Mick Rory on the show. Uh, happy holidays, everybody. Hi, this is Fiona. I voice Gideon. Merry Christmas. Hi, this is Lisa. I'm voicing Pearl. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Hi, this is Beth. I also do the voice of Iris, and I am portraying Flora in this Christmas episode. Merry Christmas, everyone, and Happy New Year! Hi, this is Katty. I'm voicing Flora, and I wish you all a happy holidays. 